Hey, it's Azalee from Gratefully Aged. And a question that I get a lot is, what's the difference between the free version and the plus version of ChatGPT? Is the difference in functionality worth paying $20 a month? In today's video, I wanna walk you through those differences so that you can make that decision for yourself. In reality, there are so many intricate differences between the free version of ChatGPT and the Plus version. So what I wanna do in today's video is to break it down into three major areas. The first is what goes on behind the scenes in each of the versions. Second are the limitations for how much you can use ChatGPT in the free version. And the third are access to tools in the plus version that you just don't have in free. So let's get started. So before we can talk about the differences and what goes on behind the scenes when you enter a prompt into ChatGPT, we first have to look at the models that are available in the free version versus the plus version. So on my screen, I have the free version of ChatGPT on the right and the plus version on the left. If we click here on the free version, we can see that we have available to us ChatGPT. And this is in fact, the same chat GPT-5 model that is available in Plus. If we go over to the Plus model and we click here, we can see that we have a variety of models available to us. So not only do we have GPT-5 Auto, but we have Instant, Thinking Mini, and Thinking. And I don't wanna to spend too much time going into detail on these, but basically each model spends more time doing deep reasoning before it gives a response to your prompt. I think the important consideration here is that while both are using the same brain, they're both using GPT-5, they're not using it in the same way. When you have the free model, the system really allocates a very limited amount of time before it gives a response. So the amount of reasoning that's happening before you get your answer is just not very much. That's why your responses are so quick. In the plus version, that's not the case. It's definitely spending a lot more time before it gives you an answer to your prompt. So the quality of the output is much better in the plus version than in the free version. And that's before you even take into consideration the fact that in the plus version, you can choose a different model that will spend more time doing deep thinking before it gives you a response. And of course, which model you use depends completely on the question that you're asking or what it is that you're researching. But at least in the plus version, you get to decide that. So with that out of the way, let's talk about limitations on usage. So on my screen, I have a comparison of the usage limits between free and plus. The first thing that we're gonna look at is messages. So messages are just the prompts that you put into your chat. Each prompt that you put in is a message. In the free version, you're limited to 10 messages every five hours. Where in the plus version, you have 160 messages every three hours. That is a huge difference. And honestly, for me, that was really the reason that I ended up switching to the plus version because when I'm using chat GPT every day, only having 10 messages every five hours, it's just not workable. Now, what really happens when you run into this limit? It's not like chat GPT just bounces you out and you can't use it for the next four and a half hours. What's really happening is that instead of using the chat GPT five model, it bumps you down to something that they call the mini models. So if you'll remember in the free version, you're already getting less reasoning time than you are in the plus version. But then when you exceed your limit of 10 every five hours, it's bumping you down to even less reasoning time. So the responses that you get, the quality of them, really not great. So the reasoning models we've already covered, in the free version, you have access to GPT-5, but in the plus model, you also get instant thinking mini and thinking. In the free version, you do get one daily think longer use, but one is not very much, obviously. Deep research, we'll cover this in a little bit more detail later in the video, but currently the free version gets four deep research prompts a month, but it's not using the same GPT-5 model where the plus version gets 25 deep research runs and it is using the full chat GPT-5 model. Image generation is available on the free version, but there is a cap and the quality is not the same output as it is in the plus version. File uploads and analysis, it's the same thing. It's allowed, but the file size has to be smaller and you get fewer uploads every day. In summary, the allowable usage in the free version is significantly less than in the plus. So if you're somebody who's gonna be using it a lot, like me on a daily basis, then these limitations are really gonna be hampering. 
When you add on top of that the fact that the quality of the responses that you're getting or the image generation that you're getting are also significantly less than what you get in Plus, it's really something to consider. Okay, so we've covered the differences as it relates to what goes on behind the scenes and the limitations between the two models. Let's talk about tools. So let's look at the menu items that are listed on the left-hand side. Obviously, we have in the free version access to chat and the ability to search chats. Library and Sora go together. So the Sora is your tool for creating images and videos, and Library is where all of those creations get stored. And again, the thing to remember here is that the images and videos that you create in the free version are not going to be the same quality as those that you create in Plus. In the free version, you do have access to custom GPTs, but here's what's different. In the Plus version, you have the ability to create your own custom GPTs. And this might be an important deciding factor for you. We're going to cover what that means later in the video. As we discussed earlier, the free version does have access to deep research, but it's limited to four of those chats a month. And they also have access to voice mode, which is here. All right, so let's talk about the tools that are only available in the Plus version. So back in our Plus menu, on the left-hand side, you can see we have access to something called Codex. And this is really for people who code. If you write code or read code or edit code, this is the place for you. I don't do anything like that, so I've never been in here. I wanna come back to creating custom GPTs because I do think this is a really cool tool that's only available in Plus. The next tool is projects. And projects is something that I covered in my video on meal planning, so I'll put a link to that here or here, wherever it's supposed to show up. So I don't want to spend too much time on that, but if you'll remember, the thing about projects is it's like encapsulating a process, if you will, into one place. And so you can have individual chats within your project and it will remember everything from the first chat all the way to the last chat. So it's really convenient and a really efficient tool to use. So as a refresher, or if you didn't see that video, I set up an initial set of meal planning prompts so that I could every week create a menu, a shopping list and a set of recipes to make it easier for me because I absolutely hate meal planning. Okay, so let's go back to GPTs for a moment because you'll remember that I said that in the Plus version, you can create your own custom GPTs. So the reason why you might wanna do that, let's take my meal planning project as an example. When I set it up as a project, it's in my personal chat GPT file, so only I can access it. Let's say I wanna make that tool available to family and friends or my YouTube subscribers or to the public at large. Setting it up as a custom GPT allows me to do that. So as an example, if I go into GPTs here and I look at my GPTs, I have already created a meal planner pro. And what that does, when I set it up, I basically put in the same information as I did when I set it up as a project. And I don't wanna go into that detail here. Maybe I'll do another video on how to do a custom GPT. But what it allows me to do is to access every step that I had in my original project here in a custom GPT. But the great thing is I can then decide, do I want this custom GPT to only be accessible to me? Do I want it to be accessible to anyone that I give a link to? Or do I wanna be able to make it available to the public? The next thing that I wanna show you is called agent mode. And the way to think about this is instead of asking ChatGPT to look at something or think about something, you can give ChatGPT instructions to actually do something. So when you start a chat, if you click on this plus button, you'll see this agent mode. And there are limitations on agent mode in the plus version. I think you get 40 a month, which to me is way more than I need. But you can click in agent mode. And then once you're in agent mode, then you give it a task to do. So let's say I'm taking a trip, but where my flight lands is not actually my ultimate destination. So maybe I wanna ask ChatGPT to go into my email, find the email with my flight confirmation, look at the time that I land, find the distance between the airport and the train station, and then look at train schedules that leave that give me enough time to get to the train and provide me a list of train departures and the cost. I'm going to ask ChatGPT to search my Gmail for my EasyJet booking confirmation for Porto to Nantes extract the departure time, the arrival time, the airline, the flight number, and the booking references. And the cool thing that I like about agent mode also is you can actually see what it's doing as it's doing it. And so it's gone out and done that. It took it 27 seconds to go through my email, find all of this information for my flight times. Then what I did is I asked it, based on that arrival time in Nantes, to check how long it takes to get from the Nantes airport to the main train station, and then search for trains from Nantes to Angers, which is where I ultimately need to go. 
So from that prompt, it gave me a list of trains and their departure times from Nantes, and it gave me some price guidance. What I could do from here is I could ask ChatGPT to book one of these trains. It would go through that online reservation process and then stop at the point when I needed to pay. The next thing I want to cover are recurring tasks, which is something you can set up in Plus, but you can't set up in Free. So you'll notice I have the exact same prompt to remind me every morning at 9 a.m. to take my meds. In the free version, you'll get the response, I can't send notifications or reminders outside of this chat. And then it gives you instructions on how to set it up using some other application. In the plus version on the left, I put in the same prompt and it says, done. I will remind you every morning at 9 a.m. to take your meds. Turn on desktop notifications, allow or not allow. I could turn this on and have it notify me on my desktop, or I could add in instructions to say, please send me an email notification and give it my email address, and that would work the same way. So that's a very high level view of what's happening behind the scenes, the limitations and the tools that are different between the free version and the plus version. But here's the bottom line. If you're just dabbling in it and you're using it once in a while for very simple tasks, then the free version is probably just fine. But if you're doing anything more than that, if you're using ChatGPT on a daily basis for studying or researching or just to save serious time in your everyday life, then I think Plus is absolutely worth it. I sort of think of it like this. It's like the free version is a very reliable, compact car. It gets you from point A to point B, but it doesn't have any extras. It doesn't have air conditioning or a stereo system and you still have to roll the windows up and down with the crank. The plus version is like a really solid SUV with leather seats and GPS and air conditioning and the latest stereo equipment. And it doesn't just get you from point A to point B. It does it in comfort and style. I hope that this has been helpful and that it provides you some guidance if you are trying to decide between the free version and the plus version. I know that for me, because I use it so much for so many things that there's no way that I could manage on the free version. And it's no secret that I think it's a fantastic tool and absolutely worth the subscription price. I'm not sponsored by ChatGPT or OpenAI. In fact, I don't think they sponsor anyone. It's just a really fantastic tool and I hope that you'll give it a try. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.